Good afternoon. Uh, good day's practice out there. Got goal line in. That was a, a spirited period. Uh, went both ways in the period, which I think is probably good for our team. Uh, it was good to have P.J. James and Tyler Croft out here running around a little bit for the first time this spring. Um, I think both guys look pretty good. Questions? Scott, what uh, kind of opportunity has it been for the other tight ends with Tyler limited so much this spring? What have you seen from Arch and Flanagan and Marini? You know, I think, you know, Marini's been down now for a couple days, but, but before that I thought he was making some progress. I think all three of those guys have really made progress. You know, there's no substitute for reps and to get reps against some talented defensive players. I think it's been really good for all three of those guys. They're certainly much further along now than they were at the end of last season. Uh, with the guys that have gotten dinged and stuff in spring, is there any concern about them during the season? Are they ready in the summer, you feel like? No, nothing uh, Nothing that we've had to deal with to this point. You know, Do we feel like we'll, uh, we'll even go past the midway point in the summer? We think by the midway point in the summer, uh, we should be in pretty good shape, I think. It's good to see some of the young corners get in there and make some plays and mix it up today. Yeah, then again, it's the you know, same situation for those guys. They're, they're similar to the tight ends. They're young guys. You know, they, some have played, some haven't played much, but they're getting a lot of reps, a lot of live fire reps, and, uh, and I'm pleased with the progress they're making. At times today, I thought they looked pretty good. I thought we gave up one in the uh, in the two-minute drill. We got to look and see if it was a sack or not. It was close, so I let the play go. But um, yeah, but I think they're making progress as a group. Any further evaluation of the quarterback after uh, film from Saturday? No, I think you know. I think Gary still continues to perform like a guy who has a lot of experience, and I, I think Mike Bamonte continues to make plays. Yeah, he made some today in those two-minute drills. So it's a uh, it's been a fun competition to watch so far. How are JJ Denman and Leone taking advantage of first-team reps? I, I think both have become more consistent players. I think that's the advantage. It's it's hard to get as good as you need to get just by watching other people do it. You have to do it yourself. And I think as you do it, you find out how tough it really is. But I think both guys have done a good job becoming more consistent. Uh, Leone is obviously a fifth-year guy. How far has he come during his time here? Obviously, it looks like he's maybe your sixth offensive lineman this year. Right? Yeah, I mean, he's pushing right now to be a starter. And I think he'll certainly be in the top eight and be a guy that we're going to have to rely on next year to help us win some games. He uh, He's as dedicated and disciplined a person as we have it in our program. Uh, the way he has changed his body over the last five and a half years of his life is just remarkable. Um, and now, I think as he goes into his fifth year, he's finally got his strength levels up to a, to a point where you know, he can compete against the best players because that's ultimately what you need to do. Now, is there a different feeling for your comfort level for you depth-wise on the offensive line now that you've seen spring practice develop? I wouldn't say I'm comfortable just yet. I don't think so. I think. Outlook on it it's changed. It's it's the needle moved in the right direction for sure. But I, I'm not. I I feel comfortable. We've got probably eight defensive linemen we can we can go in and play and play winning football with. I, I don't know that we've got ten offensive linemen yet, which is what you'd like to have in a, in a perfect world. So, you know, we're working our way towards it. We've got some guys that are in there, and you know, even a guy like Marcus Applefield who who just got here. I've seen a lot of improvement. He's not ready yet, but but I've seen a lot of improvement from practice one to practice ten. The D-line has always been a rotation position for you guys, um, but is that your preference at receiver? Because I know you have different packages and things that people will play in, but yeah, I what's think, your preference? I think we, with the, all the personnel groups we play in, I, I think it'll it'll work like that. But but I think you know we've had guys like Kenny Britt and Taekwon Underwood and Muhammad Sanu, who you had to find ways to get the ball and get them the ball a lot just because of what they can do after they have the ball in their hands. and if, if someone emerges to that point, then certainly they'll play a little bit more than the others. But I don't know that that position that anybody ever plays the whole game. How much as a coaching staff are you looking forward to spring evaluation period? Uh, we're, we're really looking forward to it and a chance to go off campus. I wish the head coaches could still go off you know, and we're not allowed to. But uh, but I know the coaches will be out today, this afternoon, uh, in, a, in a lot of the schools locally here to see the top guys in, in the area for us. And, I think it's one more opportunity for us to, right now to build our relationships with the coaches and, and the guidance counselors and the teachers and the people that, that know these players in the schools to make sure that you get all the best information you can because the more information you have, the more good decisions you make. Talk about the opportunity Miles Nash has. What do you want to see out of him in the next two weeks? I, I think for any of these young guys, it really boils down to consistency because you know, when a player flashes, that shows you he can do it. But if, if he's inconsistent, it ultimately is going to cost you in a game. So for any of these young players, the more consistent they can be, the more we'll feel comfortable putting them in. Uh, you talked about the eval period. 
Does your planning of worst spring practice sets ever impact that? Because some schools are done, some schools continue on. It hasn't. We, we've really be, we've really done ours based more for when spring break is, and because we start late after Martin Luther King Day, spring break's a little later. And, and I've never liked the idea of breaking it up. Not that we wouldn't try it in the future, but right now we haven't. So we start right after spring break, and we get right at it, and it generally pushes us right up to about the limit, you know, to when uh, spring evaluations start. Okay, with Dion playing so much corner, do you? How do you feel about the free safety battle right now? I guess it's Jacobs and Aiken mostly, and two guys who played a lot of strong safety. How different are strong safety from free safety? Uh, they definitely have some differences within the defense, uh, but there are certain things about it that you need to have a similar skill set to do. Um, I wouldn't discount DeLon from that competition just yet because I think he's a guy we're still going to look at at that position to make sure we got the best 11 on the field. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right.